And welcome, everybody, to the second Coach Josh Conklin show of the 2021 season. Jim Noble, along with Wofford head coach Josh Conklin. You know, Mama said there'd be days like these, and that was a little bit of a tough one Saturday night. A 31-10 loss to Kennesaw State. Wofford drops to 1-1. and A couple of things that we now know. Kennesaw State is really, really good, really, really well coached. And, and Coach Conklin, they, they were what we thought they would be Saturday night. Yeah, no, they were. I, I thought they came out and they, they executed a really good defensive game plan. Um, they did a great job of, of keeping the ball away from our offense and we couldn't get off the field on defense. So I give a lot of credit to, like I said, you know, last week, I mean, Coach Bohannon does a tremendous job. Uh, they, got, they got really good football players. Uh, it's a tough offense to face, especially when you got really good people doing it. You know, I was really impressed with their offensive line. I, I thought that they were, I knew they were good on tape, uh, but but in person, they, they really impressed me a lot. Yeah, and it's funny, they've now won nine straight road non-conference games. That's a battle-tested team, a, a, a very senior-loaded team, and they were, uh, again, especially offensively, everything we thought. Let's go ahead and talk about on Sunday, you have the team in to watch the game tape. And I, I know you were kind of gratified a little bit about the response as the guys watched the game tape and kind of looked at what went right and what went wrong. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously coming off the field, the guys were really disappointed in the loss, uh, which you knew they would be. Uh, they thought, you know, going into it, we'd have a chance. And we, we knew if we played well, we would. Uh, we didn't play well. And so you can't get it back, and we missed that opportunity. But when we came in on Sunday, uh, the guys watched the tape. We learned from the tape. Uh, we made sure we went and corrected the things we needed to get corrected. But their attitude was really good. And you could tell that they were hungry to get back out there, um, which will start up tomorrow and, you know, move forward. It's one game that won't define our season, um, and they're, they're excited. And, of course, the quote-unquote real season begins Saturday at VMI, the first Southern Conference game of 2021. When we come back, we'll look at the first half highlights from the Kennesaw game. Look forward to the key deaths and the Terriers and, yes, the return of Conklin's Corner. Looking forward to that as the Coach Josh Conklin Show brought to you by RJ Rockers continues. And welcome back. Now, going into the game, defensively, you know what's coming at you. The, the triple option. You, you know the things that you've, you've got to try to do to stop that. How about the Kennesaw State defensively? As you guys worked on your offensive game plan, Josh, were there things you thought they, you might be able to exploit against them? Well, we knew they were going to be uh, really fast, really athletic. Uh, they were really aggressive, which means they're trying to create negative plays through pressure. Uh, they move their, their front guys really well. So we knew that was going to be hard to handle. Um, it was more difficult than we had expected. And so, you know, that was, it was key for us to get a start fast, or to start fast on offense, which we didn't do. And then on defense, you know, we, you go back, you look at the tape. I don't know if there was anything schematically that we would have done differently. Um, we have to make some plays. We got to create some negative plays. Uh, it was two, in my opinion, good players on defense and good players on offense. Uh, really getting after it um, for the first half especially. We just couldn't get the ball off the field and get it back to our offense. You're about to see what Coach is talking about. Not a lot of scoring in the first half, but certainly a lot of action. Here are your first half highlights from Saturday night at Gibbs Stadium. Back for Wofford. Brand Garrett Vernon and Okachi Eman Wurry. And we're underway here in Spartanburg. It is Eman Wurry who's going to run it out. Across the 20, stood up near the 25, and that is where the Wofford Terriers will take over and start things off. 
First and 10 Wofford from the 24 quick pass out and Barkowiak excuse me Welsh on the reception from Peyton Derrick and a good start through the air for the Terrier it goes to the right side of Derrick in the shotgun Derrick looks to throw short that's complete that's going to be good for a first down and a bit more as Mulligan breaks a tackle and falls across the 40 for a gain of eight gain a third and long like this Derrick is back to throw has to step up. That's going to be complete to KO, but he's not anywhere near first down yardage. He's wrestled out of bounds by Ja'Cory Burks, and it'll be a punting situation for Waffer. At a third and all at 11, and Shepard's back to pass. Short over the middle, and that's a first down conversion for the Owls. Shepard with Foster behind him. Shepard's going to throw, or wants to, but won't. The ball is loose. Wofford's on it after the turnover. I'll give you one guess as to who caused that for Wofford. Number 99? Yeah, Michael Mason came in from the blind side and hit him high, but also knocked the ball out when he did it. Didn't see who recovered it for the Terriers, but what a great job by Michael Mason coming off the edge. You can see him here. He's going to come from the right side, and bam, hits him, gets the ball loose. Play clock at 10, no danger for Peyton Derrick. Second and six from the 32. Derrick will throw. Complete, short, out of bounds. That's Alec Holt, the sophomore from Jacksonville. Trying to convert here from their own 43. It's Derrick back to throw. Steps up in the pocket, made one man miss, could not make the second. He'll go to his left and drag down from behind. Ball came out again, but the runner was down. View this, and I, it, this may be to see if the there was a, a fumble and then a clear recovery. Kennesaw State might not throw it five times. Yeah, see this if is we can a, glean more here. Better look here. You see Mayna coming straight down the line. I think it's hard to see if the ball was starting to come out when Shepard was on the way down pretty soon. Wofford forced a couple of turnovers in their opening game at Elon a couple of weeks ago. The Terriers then had a bye week. Um, Kennesaw State, boy, I, I thought that Kennesaw State in that Georgia Tech game moved the ball pretty well. But boy, shot themselves in the foot. And yes, it's official. It's another Kennesaw State turnover and Wofford football in Owl territory. The Peyton Derrick, who's in the shotgun, takes the snap, looks to throw into a seam. And that is picked off. They give it right back. Interception. And I think that was Cole Loden, perhaps? The Loden, Loden brothers and the Kennesaw State defense. One's a linebacker, one's a DB, and right back comes the Owl defense. It uh, That was forced in there by Peyton Derrick. Yeah, three Owls right around the receiver. Looking for Holt from their own 31. Shepard goes to his left, tries to cut it back. Good pursuit that time by Wofford defensively. You know, different look than, than Glover gives them and hard for a defense to kind of key in on one style of running. Second and five again, just puts the head down. This time runs into a wall of Derriers. Yeah, I almost think Daniels has been a little more effective. That was Glover carrying it there. It's going to bring up a third down. Shepard looks to roll right, looks to keep it, tries to drag the pile. Initial spot looks like he may be a half a yard short, and he is. Well, 15 seconds on the play clock. Wofford held their water that time, so Kennesaw State will get back into it. End around, and that's a great call on fourth down and a first down. Perry, that was Nikeen Farrow. Almost made that decision to cut up field a bit too late but sidestep the terrier watch number 15 in white yeah the timing is so important right there and they had the timing and he got it he cut up field just the right time and got the uh, first down he's another south georgia kid out of cochran georgia foster with the give surge by the offensive line he may be Man, he's, he's a half a yard short perhaps he's awfully close he is close We'll keep it, fall forward, and it probably was just enough for the first down. Whether or not they're thinking that, we shall see. Third and seven from the eight. Man in motion, Shepard looking to pitch, does. Late pitch, it's gonna be to Foster, and nothing doing. Great horizontal pursuit by Wofford. T.J. Neal was there. 
Yeah, Tahir Anur also came up from the from a corner spot, lost his helmet, but stopped him, and that's probably going to force uh, Kennesaw State to attempt a field goal from the right hash. The 46-yarder against Georgia Tech last weekend. Kick is up. And it is good. And finally, somebody has broken through here at Kim Stadium. Kennesaw State strikes first. Your score with 5-11 to go in the first half. It's the Owls three, the Terriers nothing. And he'll get the carry right into the middle of the defensive line. Two wide receivers at the top of the formation to the left. And it's a handoff right side across the 20. Good push by the Wofford offensive line and falling forward. Number of the quarterback looks at his wristband and there's the play right there. Same formation as last play. Third and one. Inside handoff and bullying his way through the arm tackle and getting the first down. Enough time for Kennesaw State to do something offensively. Derek back to throw again. He's going to have to run and he's just drugged down. He had a lane, but not anymore. Nakeem Farrow. Back to receive the Atkins Roberts punt. This one a little bit off the side of the foot. Oh, a lot off the side of the foot. Kind of shanked that one into the Wofford bench. And that's exactly what the Terriers did not need with only a minute 53 left on the clock. So it's up on the ball. First and 10 from the Wofford 39. Shepard will go to his right. Late pitch and it's open and down the sideline. Big gainer and out of bounds. Xavier Shepard under center. The quarterback. Man in motion to the right. Shepard looks to throw over the seam and touchdown. Kennesaw State. You were wondering if they were going to go to that. And it's a touchdown to Caleb O'Neill. And the Owls find Painter. Yeah, third and short. Everybody thinking run. Just sneak the guy into the end zone down the seam and a well thrown ball. All right, so just 10 nothing at halftime. I know you really were hoping it was going to be 3 nothing. Your defense was on the field for a very, very long time. And, boy, that, that final two minutes of the first half just didn't go your way. No, you know, we challenge our, we challenge our football players to get better every, every game. And, you know, as a head coach, you got to do the same thing. We, we want to win the middle eight um, part of the game. And we didn't do that. And that, I should have had enough awareness that, you know, we were grinded down a little bit um, on defense. Uh, I wanted to try to get some points before the half, so when we came out at halftime, we knew they were going to get the ball. Uh, we stayed aggressive on offense. We went three and out, and then we shanked a punt uh, for 17 yards, gave them a short field. Uh, that was not a good, uh, a good situation for us, obviously. And so those are things that you look back and say uh, differently. Would I have done something? Um, a little bit different, uh, probably I would have made some different decisions. You also note that Jimmy Wyrick came in at quarterback near the end of the first half. We'll talk about that decision. Have your second half highlights when the Josh Conklin Show continues. Dad, are you ready for the football? Why is that man wearing face paint? What's the eat ticket? Can we get popcorn? Can we get funnel cake? Can we get ice cream? How many steps are there? What's offside? Why is that car draw? How tall is that light? How tall is that? Can we come again? We sure can. Football season, the best time of year, no question. And welcome back to the Coach Josh Conklin Show, brought to you by R.J. Rockers. I'm Jim Noble. 10 nothing at half. Wofford trailing Kennesaw State. Very manageable. Right before halftime, he made a decision to replace quarterback Peyton Derrick with Jimmy Wyrick. What went into that decision, Josh? Well, you know, Peyton was obviously having a difficult time. And so when he got to the sideline, you know, we want to give a guy every opportunity to continue to correct the mistakes. But he got to the sideline and we asked him a couple of questions on what kind of coverage he was seeing or what did he see. Uh, and when a guy answers, well, I thought I saw, um, that's not the right answer. Uh, we have a specific thing that you're supposed to be looking at. Um, and if you're not seeing things, then you, we have to obviously uh, make some, make some uh, changes and, and get some things corrected. So uh, Jimmy came in, did a fine job, uh, did it like we thought he would do it. Um, 
so you know, moving forward, they'll compete again this week, and we'll see who starts on uh, Saturday. All right, so moving forward, second half action. You're about to see kind of that time of possession thing that we talked about, the Whopper defense on the field for a long, long time. Here are your second half highlights. Shepard, options to his left, pitch is good. Breaking the tackle with plenty of room down the left sideline. Finally slung out of bounds is Nikeem Farrow, but not before he crosses over into Wofford territory. From behind center, Wofford a little shift on the defensive line. Again, it's the fullback. This time the defense stiffens. Wofford defense has been on the field for what seems like the entire game. Up the middle, clear ceiling and more. Five touchdown Kennesaw State. One, Kyle one, Glover one, split one, the defense one, from 29 one, yard, one, yards out, and it's 16 nothing. The kick is deep. Wofford's going to run it back from the goal line with some room. Down the sideline, Garrett Vernon is going to take it all the way into Kennesaw State territory down to near the 45 yard line, maybe deeper than that. That was Kagan Campbell. Kagan Campbell, they made a change. Yeah. Usually it's Vernon or Ko back there. Now Kagan Campbell, the defensive back, comes back. And that's one of those, no, 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 no. Go ahead and run it back. Yep. He hit the seam pretty fast. And when he got to the near sideline, there wasn't much there for Kennesaw State. Now can Wofford do something with the great field position they have? At the Kennesaw State 34. Got to get some points out of that return right there. Jimmy Wyrick makes the hit throw. It's a handoff to the left side and brewering forward for about three. And Urban Mulligan with the shotgun. He's looking to throw. Wyrick throws short. It's complete, and that should be a first down. Somehow Wyrick got the ball to Alec Holt, and the Terriers move the chain. Third and 17. Wyrick is going to throw. Out pattern. No room, though, once R.J. K.O. caught the ball, coming up and making a nice defensive play. It would be 48 yards. Kick is up. It's got the distance. Got and it. it is good. Walker Gliarmas shows some length there. A career-long field goal, and Wofford's on the board. A gain of four. Second and six. Option right. And... Wofford defended that one very, very well. Flag on the play all season long. Shepard's back in on third down. Nothing doing on the inside. Wyrick hands off. It's a sweep left. Mulligan can turn the corner. He's got some speed out across the 40, inside to the 30-yard line of Kennesaw State. Erwin Mulligan for the second straight game breaks off a long run. We see. Lights on, full effect here. A pure night atmosphere now here in the second half here at Wofford. Third and nine, Wyrick feeling the pressure and he will go down sacked. Couple of owls there. Reddick, Wyrick from the shotgun. Pull it out, throw it left. Nice scoop catch, that was KO. First down, a little bit more, driven out of bounds in front of the Owl bench, but not before we gained about 15 and a Wofford first down. First and 10. Trip wide receivers to the right for Wofford. Wyrick looks left instead. Delivered high, pulled down nicely by Jim Welsh. Gain of seven on first down. Second and two from the 32. Lock running, 12-32. Go here in the game as Wyrick Looks to the right side, dangerous pass, but it's caught and getting loose down the sideline is Matthews. He steps out of bounds inside KSU territory at the 47 yard line. All right, well, it's a dangerous pass, but the, the, the end result was great for the Terriers as uh, Matthews with a nice catch on a, on a well-thrown ball. Yeah, game of 32. I, I think if the defensive back is looking, I think that may be Singletary. If he's looking at the ball instead of the receiver, I think he veers off and has a play on the foot. Something cooking on this particular drive. First and 10. Wyrick back to pass. Blitz comes, he steps up, Wyrick throws, and that's complete. Catch and run, 20, 10. Diving for the pylon and just out of bounds, it looks like. Mulligan to his left. Mulligan has it, slices in. Did he get across the line? He did. Touchdown Terriers. Herman Mulligan from a yard out. And here in Spartanburg over Wofford. First and 10 from the 40. 
Fullback once again gets it. Second and seven after the gain of three. This time Shepard rolls right. Keeper splits the defense. 40, 30, 20, 10. Shepard is into the end zone for the nail in the coffin. That is a 56 yard touchdown run. So the final is 31 to 10, Kennesaw State over Wofford. Wofford drops to one and one. The non-conference part of the season, at least in terms of this middle part, is over. And of course, as you come out of that, though, you look at the game tape. Um, certainly some bright spots. Let's start with Brandon Mena on defense, who a guy I don't think a lot of fans knew before going into this game got a lot of action and made an impact. I thought. Yeah, Brandon's a true freshman, and to go in there and, and play against the uh, option team and, and do what he did and really show up, he really felt him during the course of the game, uh, that's encouraging to see. Uh, so he had, he had a really good game. Um, I felt like uh, our return game was pretty good. Um, we found a, a, re a return guy, I think, that has a pretty good feel for it. So as bad as it is sometimes, there's always good things you can pick up and learn from, and, and we'll definitely take those. Head coaches love special teams. You just love it. We'll, we'll talk more about that in, in Conklin's corner. Walker Gliarmus, 48-yard range. I didn't know the kid had it in him. <laughs> right. No, I don't think I did either. Uh, you know, in that situation, we just need to get some points on the board. And, and I asked uh, Coach Doolett, our special teams coordinator, um, you know, what his mark was um, pregame because we kick on both sides. And he told me what it was. And I said, well, let's let's see if he can put it through. And he well, did, which was awesome. All right. That was good to see. And finally, I think when you boil it down, um, our view from the booth calling the game Saturday night certainly was an effort. It was execution. And I think you alluded to that post game too. Does it give you a good feeling moving forward that say, you know what, the final score is what it is. But when you look at, especially defensively, um, the effort that you put forth, you said you were feeling pretty good about this football team. Oh, yeah. No, I feel really good about our football team. I, I think that this is one game against a really good football program. Uh, if we would have played uh, better on offense early, um, it could have been a different game. And, and I say that because, you know, we defensively, we came out, we got two turnovers on their first two drives, one turnover uh, in their red zone. You're, you're expecting to at least get three points off of that. So, that game, if you go, you know, you get 10 points ahead or 14 points ahead, it's a completely different game for the, just because of their style of play. And we knew that's what you had to do, and we didn't do that, and it just kind of snowballed out of control for us. But, um, no, I feel really good about our football team right now. Uh, we're in a good spot. We play hard. We play with great effort. Uh, but, like, but you're correct. we got to execute better. Yeah, and there's a certain school of thought that says, you know, coming out of those first couple of games, if Wofford could be one and one, that's not the worst thing in the world, but all that's behind us now. SoCon time. We'll talk about the opener at VMI coming up next. Sure can. Football season, the best time of year, no question. And welcome back to the Coach Josh Conklin Show. The Southern Conference opener Saturday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Wofford at VMI. The key debts are 2-1. and one, Wins over Davidson and Cornell last week. And a 50-point and a loss to, to Kent State that probably is an aberration right now. The key debts for years... Coach, it was, oh, they're, they're well coached, they're well drilled, they just don't have the talent. That's sort of off the table now as they kind of prove by winning the Southern Conference in the spring. Yeah, it's completely different. Uh, they've done a tremendous job down there. I got a lot of respect for their head coach, uh, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, do an unbelievable job in terms of putting their guys in position to make plays. And then you combine that with the athletes that they have. Um, it, it's a pretty potent um, thing they've got going on right now. So. Uh, every week is going to be very difficult. Uh, there are no teams where uh, you, don't, you don't have any you know, bottom feeder teams, in my opinion, in this conference right now. So uh, it's a tough road we got ahead of us. 
defensively, you're either going to face a very talented sophomore quarterback in Seth Morgan, who, who played against uh, us in the in the game in the spring, or possibly a freshman if Morgan's not ready to go. They have a veteran wide receiver who's a stud in Jacob Harris, very good veteran running back. Talk about defending the key debts. Do you expect the same sort of attack the last couple of years? Yeah, we do. I think that uh, you know we've got to try to figure out a way to – uh, eliminate the wide receivers, big catches in big situations. When you look at last last year's game, especially, uh, he's a playmaker. He always makes the big catches when he needs to. Uh, but you got to stop the run. You got to try to make them one dimensional if you can. Uh, you got to be able to play aggressive in the pass coverage, and you got to find ways to bring three, four, and five man pressure. So, uh, and sometimes six. But it, it's a it's a heck of a challenge for our, our football team, and, and we're going to have to play really well on defense to be in it. And hopefully we won't have a a two-and-a-half-hour lightning delay like we had the last time we went up to Lexington 2019, I believe, which just throws you completely off as a football team, and there's not enough orange slices to go around and all that good stuff. So hopefully that won't be the situation. We'll have the game on the Wofford Digital Radio Network beginning at 1 o'clock, kickoff 1.30 Eastern time. Now it's time to look ahead to, yes, the segment we've all been waiting for. I told you head coaches love special teams. That's the theme of this week's Conklin's Corner. All right, so the play that I wanted to pull out this week uh, was a kickoff return from the second half. There's a couple things that I wanted to, uh, I thought this play illustrated or demonstrated as far as our football team. We came out in the second half, uh, had an opportunity to get off the field and get the ball back to our offense, which we did not do. Uh, they score, they go up 17 to three. And, you know, we are a one play at a time uh, mentality. Uh, next play, uh, you can't do anything about the past, so we've got to do something about the future. And our kickoff return team goes out and really did a phenomenal job of executing uh, this play. Anytime in the kickoff return game, uh, we are trying to look for that ball being kicked somewhere in the strike zone back here. Um, and that's, in essence, uh, where we want the ball to be kicked. If we can get it kicked in that vicinity, uh, it's not deep in the end zone, then we'll have a chance uh, to return it. From there, what we have to do is we have to be able uh, to set up the timing and get the things um, lined up uh, with really 10 other guys on the football field. And this is just a really good job of timing, execution, and want to, and a lot of guys trying to make a play. We are trying to take uh, these three defenders right here, and we are trying to take these three guys in our return game and kick out okay we're going to try to double team this four the number four with those two players and they do a really good job of getting him on another level the remaining guys on the kickoff return team are really trying to kick everything to uh, the left as the returner looks at it and then you treat try to create an alley that leads up and through right there and then once he gets through the alley you know he's got to be a football player and go make a play so as this play develops and you see it, okay, just a couple things that I want to point out. Okay, again, really good job here on the double team with that guy taking him out, working over the top. We get that doubled. Okay, you're going to see some really good blocks here happen on one, two, and three. That's a violent block right there that happened just there. So you get those three defenders kicked out, and they do a great job of maintaining their leverage. All right. If you come back over here and you look at the remaining guys, as I pause the tape, I just want to show you really good fundamentals and technique as far as inside leverage, really good fundamentals right there and really good right here. So we get those guys kicked out. We get those guys kicked out. The returner gets it set up and we have the alley that we want. The other thing during this uh, clip that I wanted to show you was just take a look at the ball security. That's an awareness. That's a great job of taking the coaching during the week and being able to utilize it uh, during the game. Uh, knuckles to the chin, high and tight, player making plays, and trying to create an explosive play for our offense to have a short field and try to find a way to get back in it. Again, just demonstrated who we are as a football team. Never going to give up. Uh, we're going to fight the fight till the very end. And I was really proud of these guys' effort, and I think we obviously found – a return guy as well. Didn't do a ton of tremendous things on Saturday night, uh, but this was one of them that was encouraging to see. 
All right. Love the coaching breakdown. You may have found a return man, too. That was one of our question marks this year in terms of experience back there. I thought you were just going to tell those guys to fair catch everything and, and give, give the offense the ball, but you may have some big play guys back there, not just Kagan either. No, we, we, we want to try to figure out a way to uh, create some more explosive plays in the return game. That was a, a focus uh, this offseason. And, you know, we have some young guys playing on that, on that unit. Uh, so some of those blocks that, that you see and you watched and, and the timing of it, it's one of the harder uh, special teams units to kind of get lined up and, and oiled up, if you will. So I was excited to see where we're at. Uh, that, that was good to see at the, at the end of the game. And, you know, again, Jim, I think it, look, it, it shows you the, the effort and the tenacity. And, and our guys, they're, they're just not going to quit. And we're not going to lay down. Um, and I really appreciate about this group. All right. You got me fired up for Saturday. We appreciate your time as always. Best luck in Lexington. We'll see you there. All right. Thank you. All right. For Coach Josh Conklin, I'm Jim Noble. Thanks once again for watching the Coach Josh Conklin Show brought to you by RJ Rockers. We'll see you next time.